Welcome everyone to the uh, Adoption Engagement Forum on 28th of April 2023. Um, fairly low on numbers today, I think, because the the bank holiday weekend. But yeah, hopefully um, you'll be catching up the recording. So if you're listening to the recording, uh, hello to you too. Um, the usual quick reminder to please, uh, if you're not already, uh, I think um, certainly the people on the call are, but if you're catching up with the recording and you're new to Open Active, please do join our Open Active Slack workspace. It's um, a really good place to communicate with other people in the community and um, and to hit all the latest updates with what's going on from all the, all the various different parts of, of Open Active across the community, the steering committee, the uh, adoption engagement forum and also the w3c group as well so please do join us there we are aware um that the landing page which is linked to on that slide um we're having a few problems with that we are aware of those technical problems and howard um ask you the technical lead um for the odi's open active project team is looking into that and trying to fix that as soon as you can um but in the meantime if you if you're trying to get on there on slack and you're having any issues then please email us at hello at openactive.io and we'll be happy to um directly sort of add you into the slack workspace and kind of bypass that landing page and as i say we're we're working to fix that as soon as we can a uh, quick look at what we have on the agenda for today's call. Um, we do the usual round of introductions to start with, and um, then we've got a bit of an interactive session that we're going to run uh, around future planning um, uh, for both the W3C group and the AEF, and it'd be great to get uh, the input of people on the call. Uh, um, we'll uh, talk about that in a bit more detail when we get to it on the agenda. Um, and we've also got Chris, who uh, is jumping across from another call, so he'll be joining us as, as soon as he can. He's not quite here yet, but he will be giving a couple of updates from the W3C group around the latest on the Data Quality Explorer that has been developed, and also some updates on the activity list and how that will be managed um, going forward, a uh, few, few changes there. Um, and then uh, I'll did also think if um, either Charlie or Nish were here that we we might get an update from the steering committee. Um, that steering committee meeting only happened yesterday, um, so we might we might just have to push that agenda item back to um, a couple of weeks time. Uh, hopefully, uh, Charlie and or Nish will be here then to um, to give an give a bit of an update there, and then hopefully we'll have a chance for a bit of uh, any other business if anyone wants to raise anything uh, towards the end of the call. Um, so I'll quickly um, start with a, a round of introductions, just so um, anyone watching the recording who's new um, gets to gets to know all the people who who regularly attend these calls. Um, I'll start with myself. So I'm Tim Corby. I'm an engagement consultant and part of the Open Data Institute's Open Active project team. Uh, Tom, if I come to you first. Yeah, Tom Marley, CEO at Played, which consumes open data via its Activity Finder and publishes open data via its bookie platform. Great, thanks, Tom. Uh, Jules? Hi, yes, I'm Jules yeah, from the Yorkshire Book Foundation. I'm representing the Active Partnership Mass today, so <laughs> No pressure. Thanks, Jules. Uh, Andrew? Uh, I'm Andrew Newman, Principal Data Specialist at the ODI and Project Lead for uh, ODI's uh, Open Active Project. Brilliant, thanks, Andrew. And last but not least, uh, Dom. Uh, thanks, Tim. Yeah, <clears throat> Don from IMEN. Uh, yes, consumer of data. Yeah, and I think just sneaking in in perfect timing, Charlie, can we come to you for a quick intro? Uh, morning, everyone. Sorry I'm 10 minutes late. Uh, uh, is that fashionable? No, I don't think so at this point. <laughs> uh, Charlie Merrick Clark, Director of Play Founder and Book Tech and representing from the Steering Committee. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlie. I, th I think you, uh, you were waiting and timed uh, your arrival absolutely perfectly. So. That's I great. Can't really played good timing, so uh, there we go. Highlight. Yeah. I was just about. To, I was just uh, volunteering you for a steering committee update towards the end of the call, but um, well, if uh, if uh, if not, we can we can leave that till next week. I was just uh, to next time. I was just saying, but um, yeah, we'll see how we'll see how we're doing and how you're feeling. Um, right. Uh, we'll crack on with the agenda. First up, we're going to have a bit of a bit more of an interactive session than, than we've been having in previous um, AEFs uh, more recently. Um, and we really uh, wanted to look at some future planning for the AEF, but also um, an opportunity for the uh, people who regularly attend the AEF to feed into some future planning for the W3C group as well. 
Um, we're going to use a, a Jamboard, um, and I'll just uh, stop sharing this and these slides and switch across to uh, Jamboard. Um, if you just bear with me, I will reshare my screen. And I'll just quickly uh, run through uh, what Jamboard is and um, before passing on to Andrew, who is going to sort of kick off the session. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with Jamboard, hopefully you're seeing that OK on the uh, screen share. Um, it's coming through and um, it's a sort of Google's um, whiteboarding collaboration, virtual virtual whiteboard app. Um, it's I'll put the link in the chat in a minute um, for for those on the call. If you're watching the recording, I'll um, put a link to the Jamboard in the description as well. And we'll leave this Jamboard open, I think, um, until the next AEF meeting, uh, which will be in a couple of weeks time. So if you are watching the recording and, and you're not able to join today, then um, there'll still be an opportunity to, to feed into this and, and add any thoughts you have as well. Um, for those who aren't familiar, there's a menu on the left hand side here. Um, can you see my mouse arrows? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the main uh, feature really to focus on is this um, sticky note. So it acts a bit like real life sticky notes. Um, you click on that. You can change the color if you want to be creative. If, uh, if not, you can just uh, type any uh, text into the sticky note and then hit save and it comes up as a sticky note which you can then move around and reshape and if you click on the little three arrows here you can go in and, and edit um, edit that as well so that's uh, i'll delete that one and um, that's how it works um i'll pass over to andrew now who's gonna start us off with first looking at the w3c community group and um some look at future planning for some of the technical technical priorities for that uh, coming up. Is that okay, Andrew, if I pass to you now? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so uh, at this week's W3C, we had a short conversation about the kind of future technical priorities for Open Active. Um, and uh, steering committee, uh, sorry, the, 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 so, so at the moment, the steering committee are thinking about the kind of strategic priorities for Open Active as an initiative and what, what we want Open Active to be in the long term. Uh, we are trying to get the W3C group to think about the kind of technical priorities uh, and, and what those are, both for the short term and the long term. Um, and in, in this group, you know, we, we think the adoption and engagement forum can make really good and valid contributions to both of those discussions. and. Uh, Charlie uh, is lucky enough to be the representative of the AEF in the steering committee, and he does a reasonably good job of representing you guys. He will come to the steering committee and he will challenge your, your perspectives. So, so you are represented. Um, at, the, at the W3C this week, we started that discussion about, about the priorities. Um, and I think being reasonably new to this, one of my observations is that quite a lot of our technical work at the moment is quite reactive. It's quite focused on fixing known issues and problems. Um, and we don't really think a lot about the kind of long term. Uh, and by the long term, I'm, I'm kind of thinking three, five years. You know, what do we want open active uh, as a set of data specifications and a set of technologies to look like in three or five years time? Um, and, and that's really important because being able to do that helps us give certainty to people trying to implement the standards about what they can expect to happen. Um, it it gives the it, it, it makes it possible for the technology and the data stat specifications to support the the str strategy that the the initiative has overall. So the, the things that the steering committee are thinking about at the moment. Um, and it makes it easier for us to kind of plan investment and work out what we need to invest in when we need to invest in it and, and make the case for that investment as well in the in the longer term both with our current sponsor, uh, Sport England, but also potentially with any new sponsors that we might find or, or discover. Um, so, so the W3C committee have their thoughts on what they think we need to do technically with Open Active. Um, uh, and we we had a first chat about that on, on uh, I think it was on Wednesday this week. Um, 
and, and I think what we realized was quite a lot of things we were talking about are short term that they're, they're, they're bugs that need fixing they are issues that need resolving um and actually in the longer term we don't have that many objectives and what we thought it would be useful to do is kind of ask the same question in this group so actually what is it you think we need to be doing technically in the short term and what do we need to be doing technically in the long term and if we bring this group's view as the kind of adopters together with the kind of view of the the the, 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 the people managing the, the the data and the technology and, and so on we should get a, a quite a good view of what we need to do to improve open active now and in the future so, so that's kind of the, the the premise for this um the way I did this with the W3, it didn't work like I wanted it to. So I've simplified it right down. I've got a short term box and a long term box. Um, and, and, and I think what we're going to do is just drag post-its onto this about things that people think need to happen. Um, I, 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 what I will do once we've done this is I'm going to take all of the data from both groups. I'm going to try and refine it into a very high level roadmap initially. <laughs> and then test that again with the W3C group and hopefully the W3C group we can make it a bit more strategic and make it start thinking a bit longer term than, than it perhaps has been recently. Um, that's the the intro so Tim should I hand back to you for the facilitation bit? Uh, sure you can do um, yes uh, as Andrew said I think um, it'd be really useful just to get the people uh, the views of the people on this call um, as the kind of boots on the ground, so to speak, of some of the, the challenges you, you're experiencing a lot with the people you're working with and the, the people you're um, engaging with and um, encouraging to adopt Open Active, um, and particularly from a technical sense. And then um, once once we've done this uh, Jamboard for for five, 10 minutes, we'll, um, we'll switch across and, and start thinking about the AEF group as well um, with, a, with a similar similar lens um so i don't know the best way to do this i, I was uh, if uh, welcome to suggestions either we can have a few minutes for people just to, to put um thoughts down and ideas and then come back together um and discuss them so i think that might be the best way to do it but if people want to just you know discuss or, or talk out loud while, while they're doing it as well then then that's absolutely fine um but yeah i would just give a few minutes for um for people i can i can see people have joined the gem board the link is in the chat if if you haven't already um clicked through to the link um so yeah just feel free to start um sticking some some sticky notes down and, and as i say we'll give a give a few few minutes if if you're watching the recording there might be a few minutes of silence so you might want to <laughs> you might want to skip skip ahead a little bit um in in the recording but um we can edit this bit out tim and have a magic empty board full board oh yeah well but yeah we can we can do yeah um so yeah i can see yeah see some things going down so yeah i'll just give it a couple of minutes and, and then we'll come back together and talk through them oh things sorry can you edit that bit out just shift and return just posts rather than actually returns. Ah. Oh. There you go. Jules the, Jules the expert. No, I'm just annoyed. Just... <laughs> formatting, simple formatting, putting line breaks in things. <laughs> oh, it's it's like um Teams and Slack, uh when you press return for a new line in the message and it posts it before you're ready. I hate yeah. I my bugbear why, why doesn't the return key do what it should do <laughs> so shift and return is what i do by and even shift and return didn't work on this so <laughs> angry old man today yeah unfortunately jamboard is a bit of a well hopefully google the google gods aren't listening it's a it's a slightly clunk, clunky tool but um it's it's the best we've <laughs> best we've got unfortunately <laughs> at the moment so um it's it's what we're using but I think Google is Latin for nearly ready, but use it anyway. <laughs> Some great, great suggestions uh, being put down. That's really good. Thanks, everyone.
Hi, Chris. We are we are all here. We're just we're just in the um the middle of jotting jotting some things down on, on a jam board. So if it's a bit if it's a bit quiet, don't panic. We are we are all here and the meeting is running. Fair enough. Hope everyone's well. Do you uh, can you see the link in the chat or um the jam board or shall I read the chat? I don't know if you uh, can there's see nothing it. In the, there's nothing in the chat, no. Okay. I will post it again for your benefit. Thank you. Oh, I really like that one about participation API. That that's something that crops up quite a lot. That's quite an interesting idea. Yeah, I think if there if there's any real sort of blockers or challenges that that you're running up against with um with your engagements and, and trying to trying to get people adopting Open Active, that'd be really useful to to jot those down here. But yeah, some really really good things being put down. I don't know, Andrew, if there's um I don't know if there still seems to be lots of uh, lots of ideas going on, but I don't know if there's any particular yeah. ones you want to pick out or or highlight or um ask ask, you know, for a bit more be a bit more detail or anything. No, I am just skimming through them now. So um yeah, the the QA and test suite. Um we're gonna talk about uh QA on on the call today, so hopefully that will help reassure on on that. But that is, we we are improving the information that we give to people about the quality of data. Um, I, I think the test issues of the test suite and the validator, we probably need to dig into those and understand those a little bit more. So maybe we come back to those. Um, yeah, I think there's something in that in that one about kind of. Um, shared infrastructure that's probably something about how we we open up about how the infrastructure works and how, how we're using it that's quite interesting um yeah site id for active places i think i think that is possible at the moment but maybe we need to improve the guidance around that perhaps um the i'm not sure what the how much should this be a task and finish project one means um that, that's, that's a bit unclear i'm i'm wondering how many people are actually employed by odi and how many how you know is there a definite end to this or is it just going to carry on okay um that's a very rude question this time in the morning i apologize uh, why are you I mean, here I can, I can justify that. yourself i can answer that one at the moment so, so at the moment you know we we have grant funding from sport england and that that runs out on the 31st of december so actually beyond the 31st of december there is no money for open active uh to be delivered by odi that doesn't mean open active disappears of course all the standards will remain um, the infrastructure will be there. There'll be less people maintaining stuff, and there'll be no coordination. Uh, we actually raised that as an issue at the steering committee yesterday, and they accepted it as an issue. I think, um, and and Sport England are have taken a couple of actions around that. Um, we're also looking at other sources of funding. So uh, there is a little bit of international interest in Open Active, and we think there might be some a route to funding through that. So, yeah, I, I, I think long-term open active shouldn't be a task and finish project it should be a an initiative uh, it should be have some sort of organizational model um and that that is the main focus of the steering committee at the moment working out what that organizational model looks like and how we get to it so yeah it should it shouldn't be a project that's my view <laughs> that's not the odi's view though. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Um, I just, I guess, maybe for a couple more minutes, just before we move on to thinking about the AEF in a similar way, um, open the floor to um, anyone who wants to uh, raise any questions or, or particularly highlight um, as something they've put down. Um, just, just with um, with Andrew, who who chair, who I'm not sure we said, but Andrew is the chair of the W3C group. So, um, yeah. yeah. If anyone wants to take the um, opportunity to particularly highlight something they put down or, or ask any questions of Andrew while, while we're on this subject, then um, 
what are the two groups is something I've, I've never quite asked. Why is there two? Oh, okay. So do you mean the AEF and the W3C group? They're, they're all letters and numbers to me. <laughs> okay, so the... Um, so, so, so it, I'll start at the top, actually, for, for, for open active governance as a whole. So the funder is Sport England, um, and they are ultimately the decision maker. You know, they, they tell ODI what we can and can't do with the money that we get, um, and they control the flow of funding into the initiative at the moment. Um, to help um, Sport England know what the right thing to do is, we have an open active steering committee. Um, that, that committee was reconstituted in January. Uh, it has uh, 10 members uh, and a couple of observers uh, and that committee is currently looking at the governance of open active uh, the, the longer term strategy for open active um, and it is uh, starting to have a more active role in risk and issue management and, and the steering committee is there to provide advice to sporting and primarily but also to odi about what we should do with open active uh. the, 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 we've then got two operational groups we've got the w3c committee so w3c are the organization who set the standards for the web you know uh, they look after http html um uh, uh schema.org uh scos all those those standards that make the internet work basically um they have this model of community groups who who define standards for sectors um, and we have a W3C community group for Open Active. Right. And what that group is doing is it is defining the, the technical specifications that make Open Active work. Um, and it is overseeing the operation of this, the core infrastructure that enable the data to flow through the Open Active initiative. Um, so that's what the W3C group does. It's entirely voluntary. It's an open group. Anyone can join it. Uh, it meets once a fortnight like this group. Um, uh, 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 and it kind of it doesn't own the specifications, but it makes sure the specifications work. Uh, and then we've got this group, the Adoption and Engagement Forum, uh, and this group is all about uh, helping people see make open active work in reality, uh, demonstrate the benefits of open active, um, and explore new use cases for open active. And, and they're the three core groups in, in open active and I guess the difference between W3C group and this group is this W3C3 group is the standards and the specifications this group is well how do we make it work excellent that makes sense I'm now because I'm old I'm thinking about the goodies okay you yeah Tim Brooke Taylor who is the overarching steering you got yeah. Graham Garden who's the scientist and you got Bill Oddie who's there doing yeah that, that's how I will remember it so this is, you need to ask your parents about so this is the the bill Oddy of open active isn't it maybe, maybe that's how we should rebrand it <laughs> so yeah thank you i hope that helps uh yeah so that, that i found that really useful that, that i can see on that slide slide there that there is lots of things that are interesting um uh, and that actually i can take back to the w3c and say actually the, the aef think that these things are important and we can put those alongside alongside things they think important and do some proper prioritization so thank you for that I've realised I put a lot of my things that are actually Bill Oddy rather than uh, Graham Garden. So sorry. That's okay. Um, we we can we can sort it out. Um, Andrew, just a question for me related in the way this is moving um, very transparently between groups as a particular uh, exercise you're running. We've obviously got governance um, in place with me capturing um, the sound bites that uh, AEF are talking about and want raised SE and that's reporting through like I can I can confidently say there are actions on SE agenda that are coming from this group so I uh, hope to give you confidence you can see that but I'm sensing a bit of a gap between W3C and steering committee and equally vice versa between our two groups I've added a thing there but you know even steering committee doesn't have much sight of what W3C is talking about doing what the blockers are etc uh, and that's one of the things I want to fix through this work. Um, we did have a idea of someone who could represent the uh, W3C at the steering committee, but it didn't pan out. Um, that's a, 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 I, I can't say much more. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I know it will be re a representation thing of someone who's consistently available on, on board. Yeah. Um, but I will be observing the steering committee going forwards and I believe that means I can say things in the meetings <laughs> so yeah no, I will be able to raise things from the W3C into the steering committee I, I think we should 
at, put that down as a as a as an AOB for next meeting. If you could take that away with Julie to go, you know, yeah. are, are SC happy with you doing an, an updated report from W3C in the same way, and, and are you happy to in your your um, bandwidth? Because I feel there's a disconnect here that would be useful to to connect. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. I think that, that's one Andrew can can definitely take away. Um, I'm just getting conscious of time, so so apologies, but I'm just going to move the um, move us move us on. Um, so thanks very much for that. That's that's been really useful and, and some fantastic um, fantastic suggestions put down there. And um, just at the top of the Jamboard, I don't know if you can see my my mouse. There's you'll see this kind of a rectangular square which says one slash two, and there, there's an arrow. If you click the right arrow, it'll take you across to another frame. Um, and so I just wanted to run a, a similar sort of exercise, but this time more focused on the, the AEF specifically. So um, hopefully um, you all think that the AEF ha has been going in the right direction over the last sort of five, six months. We, we've made some kind of changes. I think we've we've done some some good stuff to, to get some new voices into the into the AEF and, and, and broaden the, the people who are represented here. Um, and we've also had some really interesting speakers. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you're you're all uh, thinking positively. But yeah, I, ju I just wanted to take this chance to to get any views or th or thoughts about um, the the future of the AEF. Um, and I've I've kind of not quite in the same way as the W3C. In this sense, I've split it into two. Um, firstly, uh, any ideas or suggestions for speakers and discussion topics for future agendas. So this could be general themes. Um, you know, social prescribing, uh, health, uh, anything like that, that, that's a kind of general theme that you think would be useful to discuss or, or have a speaker from. Um, and also that, that could be any specific organisations or projects. So it could be a, a project in, in terms of uh, this scale can or something like that, or it could be a specific organisation that, that people would like to hear from or or think would be useful to to come along to the AEF and and um, in some format, whether that's a, a Q&A or a presentation or whatever that would be. And then on the right hand side, in terms of the format of the meetings, I think um, recently we, we've had quite a few people coming along and speaking and presenting, which I think has been really valuable. And we've had some really interesting um, discussions and um, and uh, talk off the off the back of those. Um, but, you know, we, we could run some more interactive sessions a bit like this one with kind of um, whiteboarding and um, ideas, gathering, brainstorming, uh, co-working, those types of things. And um, we could have some more kind of Q&A type um, type sessions or, or more discussions, you know, or, or anything else anyone can think of. Yeah. So I'll just open um, the jam board up for, for a few minutes for people to jot, jot down ideas in a, in a similar way. But, yeah, be, be really useful to hear what you all think. Thank you. I think uh, class finder, that's a good one. I, PW, whoever put down the, the class finder, was, PW, is that playways that that's referring to? Uh, oh, right. I recognise it because they're my previous, uh, <laughs> previous employer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. Um, on, on the MCR Active one, we're, we're actually, um, we've rescheduled for Anne-Marie to speak at the next AEF in, in a fortnight's time. So so hopefully um, Anne-Marie will, will be it. Uh, that one in, in two weeks time. It's 
Very good ideas going down here. Thank you. Tim, you're, you're the master of the art of delegation here because we're just doing your job for you. Well, there you, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a community initiative, Cherry. Touche. <laughs> Hey, why are people putting stuff on boards? I've seen people put thumbs up and stuff on these boards before. Are they, how are they doing that? Uh, I think it's as simple as inserting them as an image, just copying, uh, pasting an image onto the board. I think I don't. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's a <laughs> there's an actual feature which which does that for you. I think it's yeah, just grabbing a grabbing a thumbs up graphic from Google Images or somewhere and then copying and pasting it in, I think. Fair enough. But you, you could add a, I th I've seen people add a little sticky note um, and just put plus one or something like that if, uh, yeah, that's probably the easiest way to do it. If, the, if there's one in particular you want to um, put your support behind. Is there any uh, particular ones that people would like to to highlight or, or discuss or um, as, as things are still still going down, there's some really good suggestions going down there. Cool. It looks like the new ones are drying up a little bit. So, um, so yeah. Just again, if if there's anything anyone particularly wants to highlight, um, but if not, I'll, as I say, we'll we'll leave this jamboard open and I'll share it with the recording and I'll share it on Slack as well to give people who who aren't on the weren't able to join us today or or are catching up on the recording a chance to uh, input into this as well. So I'll leave this open for a couple of weeks and then we can. Um, we can take this away um, with the with the other suggestions for the W3C as well and and um and review and, and try and action some of these these points. Um but yeah, if just a, a last chance for anyone to um to highlight anything in particular or or pick anything out that they'd like to raise or or ask a question about. Cool. Okay. In which case, um, I'll take that as a silence, as a as a um, as a nod to to move on. So um, we've got Chris here, who's joined us. Thanks very much for joining us, Chris. Um, and I'll switch. I don't know if this will work. Uh, does that switch switch back to the slides? Can you see the slides again now? Before we move on, can I just touch on um, what Andrew said about? international organizations and that being a source of funding going forward uh, i've had recent conversations with um a couple of like larger ngbs in different country and um they have essentially emphasized that point like they're doing their own thing that's similar but weren't super aware of open active i think if there's anything i can do to be helpful to broker those conversations i think that's pretty much the most obvious source of growth and funding of initiative like Sport England in England are the right organization to have funded this, but obviously there's limitations to that, but there are however many other countries' versions of Sport England that would be, I'd say, fairly easy wins in terms of new partners to, to onboard. Have we asked Scotland and Wales well. and Northern Ireland? Probably not. We know there is interest 
uh, in those territories, um, it's having the resource to chase it that is currently the snag. I think just as a fairly simple way of, of, of dealing with this, and obviously there's, I don't know the ins and outs, but it should be fairly from Sport England leadership to other country leadership to have a call to arms to get get them engaged because it would be a fairly simple way of gen in increasing the funding significantly without having to rewrite the model. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, perhaps that's a, a one we can revisit um, at a future AEF or, or take offline and, and we can connect Andrew and yourself to, to have a conversation about that. Um, but yeah, thanks. Good good point to raise. Um, great. So yeah, as I say, uh, Chris is here um, who's uh, hopefully going to be able to update us on a couple of um, things that have been worked on. Um, these were shared with the W3C group, but we thought it would be um, really useful to share them with um, people on this call as well. Um, so hopefully you can see the slides okay, and I'll pass over to Chris. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks. I need these slides because I haven't got them <laughs> to refer to. So, um, yeah, so I, I can't remember when it was. Apologies. I, I think it was sometime early this year. Um, I went through the data quality reporting framework um, with this group, just to explain, you know, what's been written and the way forward and how we're going to start, you know, monitoring data quality and uh, how we're going to link them to the use cases and how we're looking at, you know, data quality action plans and how we're, you know, working with the community to identify critical data elements to say, you know, these are what we feel the most important ones. Then from that, we're looking at measuring, you know, certain data quality dimensions. Um, so Howard and Darren in the background have been busy working away at uh, creating and updating um, in a sort of a, an, a, an offline environment. Um, you know, but I think just, you know, working on the, they, they're going to call it the data quality explorer so I, i'm going to go through um there's a few slides here and then i'll show it live um and how it's working at the moment well i say live i've got a the, i've got the version of it here but we actually have it. it's not live just yet so you know i said so following that you know the process we've got this I said the new tool is now in development it can display the data quality metrics um and as you can see here the focus initially is on the discovery and booking use cases that's what we're going to focus on initially but there is scope for more use cases so the work that Tim's been doing with the use case framework and the discussions in here and going forward as well that they can then feed into the data quality reporting framework as well so we can build on that going forward um, as you can see it allows you to you know explore data feeds in in real time so we can identify those areas that can be improved um, so in terms of what's going to happen is that we're going to start to look to our, look for volunteers as opposed to test the data quality explorer first of all work with them to start identifying the potential issues and look to improve and you know get all the feedback you know to, to make sure that it's working as well as it can there are a few little bugs in it um, as i understand at the moment so it's not you know quite ready yet but it's i think you know probably 99.99 percent there um, in terms of it so and as you can see the proposal is to replace the existing visualizer tool um, so if you just go to the next slide i think so this is what the open active visualizer was. So you can go in, you can choose your endpoint at the top there and you can select all your different services and it then pulls all the data through and then displays it down there. So if you just go to the next slide. So this is what it potentially look, will look like going forward. So you can see there, you know, you choose uh, the data feed endpoint. So we just, this is just, you know, random. This isn't picking anyone particular. So we, the selection here is Castle Point Leisure. Um, you select that, you execute the query, to, query, it comes through, and then it can show you here the, the, the uh, metrics that we're looking to measure against. So on the left-hand side, you'll see, you know, how many series and facility types there are. Um, my eyesight's bad. I think that says spinning, soft play, Pilates, circuit training, and body pump. Your next metrics across to here, you've got, has it got a valid name, a description, or activity ID? What's the, is there a valid postcode or geo coordinates? Uh, is there a valid start date? And is there a unique booking the url that someone can easily click on and then takes them straight to that booking page or is it you know having to you know they click on it and it takes them to the leisure center and they have to go through the whole process again so and obviously we want to try and get that 
um, as high as we can, or nearer to 100%, so to make that user journey a lot more easier. Um, I think, is there one more slide? So if we just go across, I think there was one more. Yeah, so there's just another one here. So this is just showing here, like everyone actives. Again, no, this is just random, but I think we're just looking at everyone active here because there are obviously a lot more feeds coming through. Um, and again, it just breaks down that, you know, has the valid name, description, activity, the postcodes, the start date, and the unique URLs. Um, is there one more or not? Sorry, Tim, apologies <laughs> for this. And I go back one, sorry for a sec. Right, so what I'll do, let me, I'm going to try and share my screen now. And why is, sorry, I'm coming up with a load on one sec. Oh, right, that makes sense. Right, I'll make two, let's click on this. So then hopefully, oh, for God, oh, sorry, hold a minute. Yeah. Right, I'm sorry, I've got to give Zoom access to my. Oh, right. I have to quit and reopen if I want to share the screen. Can you bear with me <laughs> just for a minute? I'm really sorry for this, but I'll be back in one moment. Hold on. Just while Chris is doing that, is there anything you wanted to pick up on, Andrew, from what Chris has said so far? Uh, no, I think Chris is doing quite a good job of talking about it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess the value of this is that it should really help people understand the quality of the data that is in the in the feeds. Um, and, and you know the, there are two beneficiaries to that. I guess the first is the people providing the feed, um, and then I guess the, the, the second is people consuming the feed. Um, so, so I think this is quite an important development for us. Right, right. Back, what can you see at the moment, sorry. We can edit the hiccup out. It's fine. Okay, good. What can you see so far, by the way? Uh, we can see it says Open Active Data Quality Explorer, Castle Point, and then... Ah, brilliant. Okay, cool. That's fine. Sorry. I, yeah, Zoom's different, obviously, from Teams, so I can't see what's going on. Okay, so we use Castle Point just as the um, example here. So you just, you know, again, if you just sort of just do the drop down, all of the feeds are here. So you can just, you know, every single one. Uh, well, I think every... Well, I think how we might have mentioned there was still a few to add in, but I think pretty much every one. So you click on what you want to see, you click execute query, and then boom, it comes up um, as quickly as that. So you can see here now, here's you know what was shown on that slide. You've got the valid name description activity ID. So it's simply just kind of hover over. So you can see there, activity ID is 81.4%. You move to the inner one, that's the name, and you move, sorry, it moves to the middle one, it's name, and the inner one is your description. So that just breaks that down. Um, and then you've got the options uh, all down here to look at the actual JSON. Um, so, you know, that we can have a look through if there are any potential issues and where they all are um, in here. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to just show and uh, I won't do everyone active because that could take a, a couple of minutes to go through. But, you know, again, not picking anyone, but we just execute the query for Leisure SK and see how that quickly that comes up. And there you go again. Um, it comes up. Like I said, there's a few things that aren't um, here. Like, you know, so before you can have a little visual here, there isn't a visual here at the moment. I'm not too sure what the, the plan is. So I'm not going to obviously speak on behalf of Howard or Darren and what their plans are for this. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a, just a very quick, you know, to show, look, this is how quick um, it can come up. The larger feeds will take a little bit more time to actually come through. But this is where we are at the moment with this and this is the plan but like i said we're looking for a lot of feedback to make sure this is actually working uh, going forward um that's pretty much the, sorry, Go on. can we look at the calderdale one at some point at, at a later point because they're the only one of the nine leisure providers that have at, uh, properly opened and we can't see anything yet don't know okay. why that's fine let me i'll make a note of that and we'll talk about that um offline jewels no problem calderdale yeah yeah okay no worries Okay, um, but yes, um, any questions, um, I suppose, just on, on that? Good job, by the way. This has been necessary for a while, so good work in pulling that together, Chris, and everyone else who's involved. Um, yeah, I think it's quite clear there's quite a, a, an issue with unique URLs, um, which are awful for the user experience. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's, it's good that we can highlight that. No worries. I mean, like, and like, but the plan will be once this is, well, so, you know, once Howard and Darren are, you know, 100% happy with everything and once it all gets deployed and we've had all the feedback and, you know, then we can start working with the community to, you know, start improving those, um, you know, the data quality and, and trying to get that up as, as much as we can. I know it's not going to be 
um, an overnight fix, but at least, you know, we've got some figures now that we can start having those conversations with um, going forward. With regard to the addresses, uh, after the meeting last time, I got in touch with Liz at Active Places and just absolutely fell in love with what they were doing in terms of the site ID. And that yeah. seems to be the Rosetta Stone that if this, that site ID is incorporated and it's backed up by this immense data set that's been constantly worked on and refreshed, that seems to be the, if we don't use that, then it seems we're missing a massive trick because that's going to be hugely useful. Yeah, I mean, I know we've had conversations with um, Liz and she's presented at um, W3C and here, I think I might have missed the call um, here. I think it was like annual leave or sick. I can't remember which one it was. It's been a weird month. Um, but I know we've obviously had conversations uh, with Liz and um, hopefully, I mean, that that's something that should be taken forward, but well, I can't I, speak for it. But I, I think their data one. set will probably be 90% accurate of what's, what all the facilities are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for active, for open active, I, I don't know what market penetration we got, but it's not 90%. No, no, I agree. Um, Nish, I say, is that your hand up there? Sorry if, if anyone's before you or not. Sorry, I can't see many hands. Yeah, no, I think Nish was Nish was yeah. next. If okay, yeah, Nish. You, Nish. Is he on mute or? You there, Nish? Can't can't hear you at the moment. Trying to fix my. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There you go. Computer was like, nah, this guy, don't listen to him. Um, so, um, <laughs> it was me. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> uh, echoing Dom's thoughts, yeah, this is really, this is really good. I think, um, I think we can see how we can be using this ourselves with an I'm in for, for various things. Um, a couple of suggestions. One is, um, and it might be somewhere, either on the roadmap or elsewhere, but definitions of what valid means across these different categories um uh, basically what maybe like a tooltip or something that you can hover over that just defines how how the the system is valid like decides a postcode is valid or a start date is valid or or an opportunity is bookable because um, okay. there might be some different factors around you know, does that mean there's space is left or does that just mean it exists at a time um so that's one thing I think would be helpful. The other thing that we get a lot of questions for from operators or, or feed publishers um, who want to figure out their own feed is, um, well, actually what we end up doing a lot is getting a list of all the unique values of different types of things. So here's all your unique addresses. Here's all your unique session names. Here's all your unique prices um, or the combinations thereof so that they can quickly scan, are all our addresses correct? Are all our titles as we think they should be? You know, have we got have we got spinning three times with different spellings for whatever reason? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that exists here, but I think that should be quite a quite an easy one to add on um, almost at the bottom there. And I think that would be that'd be really helpful as a as a quick visualization. Okay. No, thank you. I mean all this I'll pass back on to Howard and I'm sure he'll watch this video back anyway and take that on board and then we can have a discussion. Um, but as long as, yeah, I mean, it's, it's as far as I know, you know, it's keeping within those use cases and as long as it meets the use cases um, going forward, then I can't see why it wouldn't be. But we're just going to be obviously mindful that we don't want to <laughs> overpopulate the whole screen with all these numbers and circles and ends up having too many. But um, like I said, we'll, I'll talk to Howard about that going forward. So thank you, Nish. It's the number one thing we have to do for, okay, for yeah. publishers. Um, I'd argue it's more valuable than the long list of all the sessions individually underneath. Um, if it was a case of having a less busy dashboard. Um, also happy to talk through examples with whoever is doing prioritization at the right time. Sure. No, no, that's no, no, no niche, but please, sorry, I wasn't trying to... <laughs> You know, push, push you away or anything. No, it's, no, it's, it's really appreciated. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, have an offline discussion about that in the future. So thank you. Thanks, cool. Nick. Thanks. Uh, Charlie, uh, come to you next. Um, yeah. yeah, similarly echoing thoughts. I, mean, I think for those of us, Jules will say this as well, as well as, as well as Tom and Nish, who've sat on the end of feeds for several years. Like we know there's data quality issues in there. This is a big step in the right direction, I think, of um, really challenging that, that quality. Um, I guess my question, 
uh, Chris, from a from a release process perspective, is how are you guys planning on stress testing um, the uh, the sort of quality of this piece of work uh, in meeting the needs of the community? Uh, so by that I mean like I, there are so many, and I mean, you'll have diagnosed and identified lots of them data quality issues you know I, I hated everyone actives feed because the images were everyone actives logo and it just didn't work with a with a front end and you had to patch that um, and there'll be there'll be a plethora of examples of that um, is there a stage in this you know I'm hoping we're not just going to sort of release and go right we've improved that move on to the next technical project is there a stage in this where we we speak with data users and go where are you still aware of data quality issues ones that you're 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 aware of daily weekly and does this tool uh, mean that you could diagnose and, and uh, feed that back or, or for the for the data publishers they can identify those clearly and if we haven't done those those quickly start to define the roadmap I, I think you've just described um chris's job <laughs> yeah pretty much charlie yeah i'm just going to say yeah that's yeah exactly what uh, i've been tasked to do no it, it isn't simply deploy this everyone crack on see you later let's move on to the next you know, thing on the roadmap. No, so Howard and Darren are, are be more the sort of the building those, you know, dashboards and the, doing the technical infrastructure and then coming down to me to then go and have those conversations with the community and to go through all these issues that um, are finding and yeah, having those ongoing conversations. But it's that the first stage is getting that feedback testing. Part. I mean, we already had a couple of people on the W3C ask, you know, basically put themselves forward to be the first, I want to put in quotation marks, guinea pigs um, for this uh, process to, so I can, you know, and then we can work through uh, making sure there's no teething problems and everything and then go out. Because we, what we want to make sure is that, you know, especially say the figures that are on the screen right now, that they are definitely right. We don't want to be going, I don't want to be going out to someone saying, oh, you're at 0% and they're saying, oh, hold a minute, according to our, my data here, we're not. So it's making sure that the system's working first of all, but then after that, yes, when it's, when it's deployed, going out and having those conversations um, to start those improvements and continually doing it on a, on a regular basis, not just again, having that one phone call, here's your data, fix it, thanks very much. Um, but then it's prioritizing what, what do we as a community feel is the, is the priority potentially going forward? Is it, should we be looking at, you know what, let's, if we want to improve the overall user experience, let's focus on, improving the unique urls let's get that figure up as much as we can or the people saying well you know what actually it's the name that's what we really need to focus on getting that higher so it's working with everyone um, to get there so hopefully that um, answers your question yeah it does I, 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 sorry sorry Chai, I, I'll, I'll let you, you carry on if you like but i just wanted to highlight that we're just coming to time with a couple of minutes left so um, yeah just, just have to wrap this up but yeah if you, if you want to just finish Finish your point, Charlie. I'm just keen. The only thing I'll say is I'm really keen that we we achieve a breadth of uh, opinions there. Um, I don't want it to be a, a small a small engaged group of people who very regularly feed in. Like, how are we going to get a sight of the volume of data quality issues? You know, where the where the users seeing it's probably the best, and what's that feedback loop? Um, uh, because I mean, I'll have loads of experience on this. It might be quite pointed at their work or other things like how we get that breadth of view. You know, I know this work's going on. We're a big data user or potential data user. We're certainly not engaged in it. How? What about all the other twenty five? active partnerships are using this data etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. we're not speaking to many of them we're talking to ourselves yeah no that's no, good point charlie no it's fine yeah we want to yeah i agree we want to get a, a, a massive uh, range of experience and uh into this feedback so yeah we'll do um tim obviously i'll talk about activity list uh, another session um, yeah that's fine yeah, yeah so chris yeah. was just going to um talk about activity list as well but we'll push that back and, and bring that up again at a future aef and um yeah also possibly come back to you charlie um, if you're around or, or Nish or whoever at the next um, AEF as well for, for an update on, on this latest from the steering committee. Um, we're pretty much at time. If, if anyone has anything urgent they quickly want to raise in 30 seconds, then uh, feel free. Otherwise, we'll, um, we'll bring the meeting to a close. I'll just highlight again, as I said earlier, um, we'll leave the jam boards open um, for the next two weeks until the next AEF and I'll share those with the recording and I'll share those on Slack as well um, to give people an opportunity to feed into that and if you on the call have any additional ideas that you suddenly think of after the meeting or, or want to share with any colleagues who, who might want to contribute as well then, then please do share that link around and um, yeah we'll, um, we'll review those uh, in a couple of weeks time after, after we close that off but yeah. Um, 
thanks uh, thanks very much everyone for joining i think it's been a really valuable session and thanks for all your all your feedback um and uh, contributions to those jamboards i think there's some really strong and really useful um things for us to take away there and put things to revisit as well at uh, the next aef in two weeks time as i said we're due to have Anne marie from mcr active here and we'll also have david dinage um head of comms at the odi who's going to be talking a little bit about some updates that have been going on to the odi um the open active website um so um should be a really good meeting and yeah thanks all again for your time and hope to see you in two weeks time